I think I'm fully maker. I like make things. I'm not really good at drawing, but I want to see the final result when I design stuff. That's why I use a paper to figure out the pattern and structure. Because most of my jewelry is made from one single sheet of silver, so one piece. My inspiration was from Korean patchwork and also fractal geometry. It's kind of meditation to do the same thing. You don't need to think about the lies and money or friend relations and things. When you do same process, it makes me feel very calm. Korean gilding technique called Gumbu, which he applied 24 karat gold foil onto the silver surface. The silver and gold has a similar atomic structure, so when you hit them up together, the atoms move, and then when you pressure, it sticks together. I want to make something unique one. It's quite a cathartic experience when you're moving the object and your engraving tool uh, to carve deep into the metal. You know, when you carve a surface very deeply, or even a contrast of shallow markings, can make light transfer over the surface in a much more interesting way. I think people have always been drawn to symbols that reflect themselves, their own lives, or just memories of place, like where people have met each other. So some very basic symbol can have a lot of thought to it. I like to give it character. You know, often you can spend maybe a few hours on just two or three millimeters of space, just with this tiny sharp tool. And you can just spend so much of your day looking at this tiny, tiny area as soon as you leave that space, you get a little bit dazed. I don't really want to know exactly what it's going to look like at the end. I want to have a pretty good idea, but I like to be surprised.
I quite like to allow the piece to have a bit of a life of its own. So if it wants to go off on the right hand side, well, okay, who am I to stop it? And I think that's when I don't get distracted, when I'm just sitting in the studio, bashing away. I, I forget about a lot of things. I might have the music on in the background, but I'm not really listening to it. You just get into a nice rhythm. And then at a certain point, I've got to turn it into something. I quite like the fact that somebody might have something that they transport around with them the whole time. They, it becomes part of them, and I really quite like that. I do, I do quite like that, even though I don't want to draw myself. very influenced by nature and these stones come from the earth and if you think about it so does the gold what I love doing is once I've set out the basic shape of the ring I then have all my filings my dust I lay that on the surface I melt it into the piece and I use my tweezers to sort of draw on top of the ring to get that lovely crunchy finish, that aged look. And I would love my clients to feel comfortable wearing the pieces first of all but also as they wear them they're matte finished they're not highly polished and they've got a lot of texture so i want the rings to age nicely as they wear the piece it is for me quite important that it has a sort of a look of something old and new at the same time The relationship that I have with metal is having desire to use the right material for the right thing that I'm making. Steel is hard, it's malleable, it's always wanting to go somewhere. But silver being such a precious metal, you can use these materials to kind of elevate it and make it look even more precious. By having old things and tools, you can see what other people have done. And you can try and read that object in a way that allows you to see how someone else has done it maybe 20 years ago or 100 years ago. The lamp that I've been making, this has been on my workbench for quite a while. The peg that kind of holds it all together, that's the bit you touch. If you want to change the bulb or you want to take it apart, it's kind of precious. This one little bit deserves to be made from silver and last forever. My goal as a maker is to make beautiful things and sometimes they have precious metals in them and sometimes they don't.
Everything is made from a reel of wire. I work mostly with sterling silver. Sometimes argentium silver, but mostly oxidized silver and little elements of gold coming in to give a little bit of warmth. I've always been interested in textile techniques in metals. Every single piece is made from a single circle. What I'm interested in in chain is the way that it moves on the body. And there's so many different ways to get that movement in so many unit construction techniques that you can use. But I just love working with the simple circle and pushing that to its maximum. I then hammer every single loop and that gives the surface a nice faceted texture that catches the light just very subtly, gives it a little sparkle and then the colour treatment happens after that, either blackening it or polishing it to keep it silver. The fluidity is the most important thing in the work. That's what I strive for, to make the pieces that the wearer has a real tactile connection with. If I want the pieces to be successful, in the hand as much as they are when you wear them on the body. 